Pi. In the last video I promised we're gonna take a look at another new experimental feature coming to Blender and it's called Bundles. The last video here on the channel was about closures and if you haven't seen that yet I'm gonna link it up there and of course in the video description down below. Now let's check out those bundles in Geometry Nodes. Like I said this is Blender 5 and you will need that and you go to Edit, Preferences, in interface you enable developer extras which gives you this experimental tab and in here you enable bundle and closure nodes. Like I said we already looked at the closures in the last video. Closure is sort of a function definition where you can define your function and then plug that in to be used somewhere else. Very cool feature. So we let's go in here, let's create a new geometry nodes node tree and go shift a search for bundle. And you can see there's two nodes in here, the combine bundle and the separate bundle. So let's combine a bundle and see what that is good for. Uh, and also, of course, we can also bundle. We can also put in a separate bundle node and you can see this is sort of a new data type. Uh, remember in the last video we had the new data type called closure. And this is a new data type, it's called bundle. It has this new color and you can combine stuff into a bundle and you can separate a bundle into its components. So really what is a bundle in coding? We would call that um, just a generic key value store or in uh, some programming languages uh, this would be called a map or a dictionary and us nerds would probably call it an associative array but in uh, geometry nodes in Planter it's called a bundle. Um, so a bundle really is just a combination of other things, other uh, data. So for example, let's plug the geometry in here. Then we could plug in, okay, so this doesn't work yet. Okay, so let's uh, shift A and just create a color, plug that in here. Of course, we could also create a combine an XYZ, which gives us a vector and we plug that in there. And we could do a simple value, plug that in there. So we can just combine stuff into a bundle. And now in here, in this noodle, in this bundle, we have all of this combined. And instead of having to plug one, two, three, four noodles into other nodes, we can just use that one single noodle. And back here, we can separate it. Now, instead of having to manually go in here into the N panel and then in the node we would have to add geometry and then the names would have to match and all that. Uh, instead of that we can just drag out a new node separate bundle and uh, geometry nodes already gives us all the inputs as outputs over here. Also if we play around with these outputs over here for example and we just have the color but we want all of it. This uh, very handy sync button gives us all of the outputs that are inside of this bundle. Okay, so this is to combine multiple things into a single noodle. For example, let's just say, okay, we're gonna do something with this geometry here. So this goes into the group output and back here we could again do something like a set position. I don't know, last video we just did a random vector offset 0.2, something like that. Now let's say we put all of this into a group, so we group this, and outside of the group we now just have one noodle going into this group. Now let's say we combine a bundle, let's shift A, combine a bundle, and we plug something in here, just for demonstration purposes inside here, we're separating the bundle and we're using the geometry. Okay, so uh, geometry nodes knows that this node group needs a geometry inside of a bundle. So let's plug just a color into this bundle and plug that in there. And you can see uh, geometry nodes tells us that this is an error. We're accessing geometry, vector and value. Okay. I mean, we're accessing it, but we're not uh, using it. So maybe we should in here just remove that. But we definitely need geometry in here. And still out here we get an error because our bundle doesn't have geometry. If we plug this one in, 
the error goes away. Also inside here, if we go in here, this a separate bundle gives us an error because there is no value found that's called geometry. We only plugged in a value, a bundle that contains color. Okay, so the key, if, like I said before, um, this is like a map or a dictionary or just a key value store. The key is this name here. So whatever you call this, this is what you have, what you need for the separate bundle node. And also there is no type safety really, which we can demonstrate by just plugging in a separate a bundle node. And let's say we have, uh, we know that there's a color in here and we use color, but let's remove this, add a new one. Let's just say it's geometry and we call it color. And you can see there is no error. There is a color in this inside of this bundle and we're separating this bundle. We take the color input, but we're using it as a geometry and this, this does not currently give us an error. So there's no type safety yet. Maybe this is coming in the future. Okay, so let's uh, plug this one back in here, remove this. So in here we know that we have a geometry and inside of this node group, we separate the bundle that's incoming and we know that we have geometry and we use it and do something with it. So this, this node group would be our deform. And instead of plugging geometry in and maybe the value, you know what, let's use the value in here. So in here, we could click sync. We don't need the color, we don't need the vector, but, or maybe let's use the vector, that's better. Okay, so sync again, remove color, remove value. We need the vector and we plug that into here. And this is now our the scale of our randomization. Okay, so let's go back out. And this vector here, we can now use to randomize the geometry inside of that. Okay, we're not really using the color, we're not really using the value, we're using this and that. Okay, um, now like I said before, this is a key value store, and the key is this name here, which means you have to use the same name, so this we called geometry and this we just called vector, in here to get out the geometry and the vector. Okay, if we rename this, if we call the vector, let's call this a randomizer, okay, and we're plugging that in here, we're already getting an error because there is no vector in here, so we would have to go in here and also call it randomizer, or simply click the sync button again and then remove the, no the, the outputs that we don't need. So yeah, the name is important. And of course the type is also important. In this case, it's a vector, but like I've shown before, there is no type check yet. Now I've played around with this a little bit and I realized that there is uh, something definitely missing. Uh, but of course, I mean, this is still experimental. It's being worked on. This is just uh, like the first look at bundles, but just think about it. Let's go in here. Let's say we have a bundle coming in we only take the geometry and maybe the randomizer, but we want to output a bundle instead of geometry. So the group, we don't want to output geometry. We want to output a bundle like that. And really there is no node because all we have are those two nodes. And there is no node now where we could plug in a bundle and then update this geometry and take this uh, for the output. Uh, this doesn't exist yet. We would need sort of an update uh, bundle node, right? Where we can plug a bundle in and then whatever we want to update. Uh, if we wanted to do this now, we would have to actually know exactly what's incoming. So the geometry, which is this, and then we would have to combine the color, the randomizer, the value. So we get a complete bundle, just like it's incoming, to be able to output on our node group. Okay, let's revert this to geometry. So now what could we use this for? One example that I've seen online, and I think it's even uh, from the 
uh, the original like definition of closures and, and bundles is imagine that this is not a deform. Imagine this is a particle system node, a very complex thing, and it handles everything particle system. Okay. Okay. And we have this plugged in there. Let's get rid of all of that for now. And then in order to use a particle system, of course, we would need some sort of emitter or we would need uh, force fields or we would need some sort of other effects. For example, maybe we have a closure and this closure takes care of like wind. Okay, imagine we have wind in here and we want to tell this particle system that this is a wind force field. Okay, so we could do something like this. We could combine a bundle, we plug in our closure and we want to tell the particle system what type of bundle this is or what type of closure this is. So we would maybe do a constant string, plug that in here, maybe even put the string on top actually, and we would say that this is a force. And in here we would uh, call this type. So our particle system uh, gets a bundle plugged in and inside it looks at the type which is a string we could even remove this and put it in here now and say this is a force and it uses all the force bundles and closures at a certain place in the workflow of the particle system and maybe we have a different closure and this takes care of um, I don't know collisions collisions and we combine that and we call that, uh, this is a f an effect, and we plug that in there as well. Of course, now we would need, you know, one of those multiple input things, like with the join geometry node, where you can plug in many geometries, one of those longer ones. That would be cool to plug in here. And then uh, the node tree in there, let me just draw this. And then this system in there goes, okay, at a certain point in my workflow, I have to handle all the forces. And then at another point in time of the particle system, maybe it has to handle all the effects. And then it looks at all the bundles that have a type effect. Okay, so this is one scenario, one possible way to use these bundles. And like I said, we would need um, one of those multiple input things to do that. Or, and this is now another little look into the future, there's one other thing we can enable in here, and that is the geometry nodes list. Also an experimental feature. And on top of that, I'm gonna enable node structure types also. So when I do that, first of all, the node structure types, you can see the UI changed here. So now we have these sort of rectangles here, and the rectangle just means a single value. Here we have multiple values, but now we also get something called list. So in utilities we have lists and we have three nodes in here, a list. And you can see here this looks really cool because this is obviously a list of something. In this case it's a float list. If I switch this over to color it changes uh, the color here. So this is now a color list. We also get a get list item um, node so we could plug the color list in here and then we could get the color at index 4 and we also get the list length node we can plug a list in there and it gives us the length now honestly the list length node and maybe even the get list, get list item node I'm not sure why this needs uh, the type here because it really doesn't matter what type we plug in here, this should always give us the length of a list. And it doesn't matter if it's a colored list or anything else. Ah, that's just my opinion. Maybe this uh, will disappear in the future, because uh, to me this doesn't make any sense. The list length node doesn't need to know the uh, type of the entries of the list. Anyway, these are the three nodes that we now have with lists. So... Maybe in the future, again, this is experimental. This doesn't mean that this is coming to Blender just like this. Maybe in the future we get something like lists. And then we could plug multiple bundles into a list. As you can see here, 
the list doesn't even support bundles yet. So this is still extremely early. And also another thing, um, this is now a list of, let's say, five entries of, of floats, and they all have the value of zero. And if we wanted to plug multiple things in here, we would have to do an index, a switch, and then use the index. And then we have multiple inputs here and we could plug multiple values in here with this node uh, over here in the end panel. You can always add items. Let's just say 11, 22, something like that, 55. And now this list has uh, five entries. And we also have to pl plug the same count in here. So this is a bit complicated now. I think that this uh, create list node should have one of those multiple input thingies like the joint geometry nodes. Then we probably don't even need the count and it gives us everything we plug in on this side as a list on this side. And then we could plug a list in here. So we could say, okay, we have a list of bundles. Let's just assume that we could plug those in here. We could uh, pick a bundle here and then we have a list of bundles and we can plug that in here with a list of bundles like that. Yeah. Um, so this, as you can see, this is all still very experimental, still very early stages. But maybe this is the way to go in the future so that we can create tools that take in, for example, bundles with closures and then this thing handles everything that a particle system can handle. I guess we will just have to wait and see. But coming back to the topic of this video, a bundle is just a key value store and um, the name of the key is whatever you name the input. You can name inputs over here and then when you separate a bundle Again, you take entries out of the bundle using the name. And then, of course, uh, the output also has a type. And this is how you use bundles. And for now, a bundle is just a way to combine multiple things of different types into a single noodle. Let me know your thoughts in a comment down below. If you enjoyed this video, consider watching another one. Subscribe and support down below. Thanks for watching. See ya.